Well, hello and welcome to this edition of Talk Time. Today, we're going to be having a very special conversation. We're going to be having a very special conversation about a very special country of very special people. We're going to be talking about Cuba. What is Cuba like? What are the joys of Cuba? Are there problems in Cuba? How is Cuba positioned in world affairs? And what has been the role of Cuba in Ghana's development effort? We are talking everything Cuba today. Welcome to the show. Welcome back to Talk Time. And as I indicated from the beginning, today we are talking everything Cuba. We are talking about Cuba as a country which has had relations with Ghana from 1959. We are talking about Cuba as a country which has participated in the national development effort of the Ghanaian people. We are talking about Cuba's role in Africa. We are talking everything Cuba. And it's indeed my very distinguished pleasure to welcome to the studio Her Excellency Annette Chao Gesia. Excellency, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Allow me to extend my appreciation for the opportunity to be here in Pan African for having this interview with you and also because of all the things you are doing as a solidarity member. Thank you very much. Now, Excellency, how long have you been in, in Ghana? Five months and some days. Wow. <laughs> and what have been your experiences within the last five months? Ghana is a wonderful time, a wonderful place to stay. It's a wonderful place because it's safe, because your people are very, very kind. And also, we are very close to, to the Ghanaian people because we are half African. And then it's easy for us because the music and the people and the way to, to, to live and the food and... Uh, you are charming, you, you have a charming people. Wow. In any case, what is the level of relations between Ghana and Cuba? For a long, long time, Cuba and Ghana had very good relations. As you know, the diplomatic relations began in 1959, on December 23rd. And actually, 1960 was this uh, historical meeting between our presidents at that time, our leaders, Fidel Castro Ruz and Kwame Nkrumah, in Hotel uh, Teresa at Harlem. And uh, from this very beginning was uh, the moment of the most important uh, time of our relations. And the relations developed in different ways, in different uh, moments. Uh, but right now, we are trying to reinforce our ties. The first thing we have, after you know, here only 30 Cuban doc doctors, but in the past we have more than that. And in Cuba, you have around 300 uh, students, student medical and uh, science there. Then we can do more, but it depends on our states. And actually, we are doing a lot because we are friends for a long, long time. Cuba was also involved in a mal malaria eradication project. What is the fate of the malaria eradication project? Right now, we are planning to, uh, to build a plant here to uh, work with the biolarbicides. And uh, it's in the Tamale region. And it's uh, a very, very um, good thing because, as, as I see, you have a lot of mosquitoes. And actually, you have a lot of malaria. For us, it's a very difficult 
in Cuba we have mosquitoes, but we don't have malaria. We have dengue. We, we eradicate the malaria. The malaria. Mm -hmm. But for us it's easier because we are a, an island, but you have a lot of borders, and then you cannot control the mosquitoes to come from different other countries. Then Cuba will help Ghana. We are in the last part of this plan for the building. And also Cuba is trying to do a work in epidemiology. The idea is not only to kill the mosquito, the mm -hmm. idea it is also that the people take care of some things just to eradicate all their ways to take this mosquito. Cuba is reputed to have built a um, health system which many people envy around the world. What is it that Cuba has done with its health, health system? You know, what is about Cuban health system that people admire all over the world? Allow me to, to go a little far. Then, as you know, Cuba is a small country. We are only 110,860 square kilometers. Then we are around 46% of, of the land of Ghana. Just for the people of Ghana know, how, how are we? We are small, we don't have mineral resources. Um, we had only a very good position in the Caribbean Sea because we are on the, at the entrance of the Mexican Gulf. And then this position gave us a lot of problem with the United States because we are very close to the United States, 90 miles only mm -hmm. from the United States, and we were one part of them before of the revolution. Then, when the revolution uh, triumphed in 1959, our government, led by Fidel Castro, our commander in chief, thought that we need to prioritize the things. And then what happened with Cuba? We, don't ha we, we didn't have uh, mineral resources. We didn't have money because all the, the, the money went with the United States uh, citizens when go and the Cuban people that were there. And we thought, we need some things to create a good society. And the first thing that the people need is a good health care. And then we improve it, the, good, the, the health care. And then also we work on the edu education because if you have educated people, you will need more and more, but from the capital resources. And then Cuba is working all time with the capital resources. And also we are working with the food, with this plant. We, we already approved a few days ago, Food for Sovereignty and the Nutrition um, Education Plan. Mm -hmm. And we are working on the environment. The idea is to have the prior priorities clear. And then coming again to the, to the healthcare, in Cuba, we are or we have very good professionals in in the healthcare because it's important for us mm -hmm. if it is important for you you will give them all the resources that it needs and also is because of our education that's why you have all these students in ghana uh, from ghana in cuba mm. so how do you manage to do that a country which is less than 50 percent of ghana's land size no mineral resources and so on and yet you've managed to build a health and educational system which is the envy of many countries how do you find the resources to be able to build such a wonderful health system sometimes it's very very difficult sometimes it's almost impossible but we do it because as i told you uh, this is a priority for us mm. for example in the time of the pandemic in Cuba, we organized our forces. We know, we knew at that time, that we didn't have uh, resources, but we knew we have a very good human capital. Then what did, the, we, did we do? First, we try to control the pandemic in Cuba. Second, we reinforce our system of health. We reorganize everything just to the people be alive, because the most important thing of a country is the people and then our people must be alive. And then the third, we developed our own vaccines. Right now Cuba have three vaccines. We three. have three. We have Abdala, Soberana, and Mambisa. And those vaccines save us. I have Abdala in my, in, my, in my body. And also my son, because Cuba is the first country that vaccinated all the, the, the children from two years. Then my son, that is 16 years old, he, he left Cuba with Abdallah in, in his body. Mm. And then the fourth thing we, we, did, we did, sorry, with this uh, pandemic was to help 
other countries. As you know, we were in Italy, we were in South Africa, we were in Mexico, and actually we are open to help all the people. And, and I think this solidarity is the most important thing that Cuba has. Because Cuba helped the people with the, the, a few things we have, and the people knows we are doing this, and then they help us. But this is not the first time. I mean, in the Ebola time, when Ebola broke out in, in West Africa, mm -hmm. Cuban doctors, Cuban technicians, and so on came. What was the motivation? Ebola was dangerous. It could kill your doctors. It could kill your technicians. They could actually take it back to Cuba. What was the motivation in making that sacrifice? The heart. The heart. Yes. In <laughs> Cuba, we always work with heart. Mm. The thing is, we need to help the people because it's the only way to, to take care of the humanity. Mm -hmm. If we kill our, the, the, the same person that, that we are, if we kill the human beings, we won't have nothing in the future. And the thing is, we have to learn from Fidel Castro. Mm -hmm. All of us, we need to read from him. Mm -hmm. Now, let's come back to the cooperation with Ghana. There's a lot of cooperation in the medical field, training of uh, Ghanaians in medicine, Cuban doctors from the medical brigade coming here, and so on. Are there other areas in the field of education, you know, that Ghana and Cuba are cooperating? We are working right now in the technical education, because in Cuba we are very good on it, and also in the special education. We are working on it right now. There is a delegation in Cuba with the chief director acting of the Minister of Health, of, mm -hmm. sorry, of Education, mm -hmm. and he will see what are the areas we can uh, arrange to, 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 help, to help you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can help you more than that. We can help you. We have uh, a program. The name is Yo Soy Puedo. Yes, I can is the translation to help the people to finish with the illiteracy. Illiteracy. Sorry. Illiteracy. <laughs> illiteracy. Yeah. Then the idea is to educate the population. If you have culture, you are free. If not, you won't. Some time ago, I, I saw some Cubans in the universities in Ghana. What were they doing? Here at the university? Yeah. We have some um, scholarships, exchange programs. And uh, actually, yesterday, I went to the East Legon University. I, I'm trying to, to reinforce the, the, mm. the um, uh, ties with the, this university. And um, because at the, at the past we had a lot of uh, exchange, now with the coronavirus is low, but we, we are working to, to do it more. The idea is to exchange, because as I told you, Cuba and, and Ghana, as a, as a part of Africa, uh, Cuba and Ghana are very close. Then we have to do it more and more to, to grow, grow up. And this is, I think, this is the key for all the developing countries. If we are trying to develop in our countries, we need to be together. We need, to, we need the union to, 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 to do some things. What is, first of all, is there a Cuban community in Ghana? Yes, it's a small, but yes, they are here. Actually, we are here because <laughs> all of us, all of us, we are the same. If they are here because they are residents, yeah. the, it's the same that if they are at the embassy. Mm -hmm. The thing is, we are Cuban, mm -hmm. and we must be also together. How, how big is, is the Cuban community? It's around 100, not more. That's more. Yeah. That's more. And, and the Cubans who are in Ghana, what do they do? What are they doing? Actually, we have here a lot of doctors. They, they are working here as doctors or are at the university. For mm -hmm. example, in Tamil University, I was surprised because I saw a lot of uh, teachers. They, are, they came from Cuba, and it, it talks uh, very good things about Cuba because they, they are there. And, uh, and they are some engineers and, uh, and vets. And they are doing some things here. The thing is, Cuba as an island, the idea is to migrate. This is a normal thing when, when you talk about an island, mm -hmm. because all the people want to go to the, yeah, the continent. Africa. Yeah, this is normal. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a lot of migration, mm -hmm. but they are a very good community. They are quiet, and they are very, very clever people. How easy is it for a Cuban to stay in Ghana? language, food, culture, you know, 
How easy is it for a Cuban to stay in Ghana? You've been here for five months. Let me tell you the truth. The only problem for me is the spicy. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot eat the pepper. The pepper. Like, yes, you eat a lot, a lot of pepper, and then I cannot. But my son love it. Mm -hmm. I will lose my son here, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but on the other, if we, if we talk, for example, about the music and the, the language, the language for us, the English is the, the most common uh, language uh, as a second language because we are close to the United States and all the time you are, see, are watching the films from the United States and this, and they, you're educated in English. But, for example, the native, the native languages are very, very easy to, to learn. And we are, how, how can I say, it's easy for the Cuban people to adapt it in any place. Maybe because all time we were under this blockade that all the people know. And the thing is, we have to survive. And then for us, it's easy to adapt it, and also because of the culture that we have. The media has reported that in your five months stay here, you've moved quite a bit. Media reported you met the president, His Excellency Leonardo Dankwa Kufuado. Media reported you met the Speaker of Parliament. You met some ministers and so on. What is your assessment of, of, of these prominent Ghanaian officials, their attitude to Cuba? What did you get out of these meetings? I think and I felt that they are our brothers. That's why, brothers and sisters, because I, I saw some ladies. Uh, that's why I feel very comfortable here. And I hope we can achieve a lot of things in my time here in Ghana. I hope to be around for years, and I'm sure we can do a lot of things together. The, the, the idea to, to see all the prominent uh, figures is it's first to learn from them. Second, mm -hmm. them to tell that I'm here to work and to help them because Cuba wants to do it. And the third is to tell them that we are the same. We are developing countries and we need from them the help and they need from us. Well, how do you see Ghana-Cuba relations going forward in terms of concrete projects? As you're talking about the building of a plant somewhere in Tamale, mm -hmm. are there other prospects? Yes. For example, is there scope for expanding the medical brigade and so on? How do you see Ghana-Cuba relations going forward? We are working to expand, to increase the number of, of doctors here. But also, uh, we are working in, in different areas, but the most important for me is the biotechnology. As I told you, in Cuba, it was very important to talk about the health but the health not only taking care of your health, is also to develop our medicines, to develop our vaccines. And then Cuba is working to, to bring here the products, the biotechnologies products we have. For example, Everprod P. Everprod P is a wonderful medicine for the diabetes. And then we are trying to, to bring Everprod P here to Ghana. And I'm sure we can do it. And I'm sure we, we can. We can do it. Some things also in sports because we have very good trainers, and uh, I, I have a, I had a meeting with the ministry, the minister of of uh, jobs and sports, mm -hmm. and then we are working on it. I'm told that Cuba has managed to develop some medicine for cancer. I know you are not a doctor, but mm -hmm. I'm told that Cuba has developed some medicine for cancer. Uh huh. We we is are that true? Yes, yes. The name is Vidatox. We are working on it, mm. but uh, it's not from the biotechnology. It's Labiofan, a Labiofan product. Is it possible that one day Ghana would have access to this medication? Yes, actually there is a lady here that has the license, and then we are working to, to expand this possibility. Well, we are going to take a short break, and uh, we are taking a short break from this conversation with Her Excellency Annette Chao Garcia, who is the Cuban ambassador to Ghana. We're going to come back, and uh, when we come back, I'd like us to move into Cuba to see life in Cuba. What is it like being in Cuba?
short break. Trasaco Estates, home to Accra's most beautiful and luxurious homes, presents its newest addition, Trasaco Springs. A premium master plan community of service plots, surrounded by an exhaustive list of amenities. The gated community of Tema to Accra Motorway presents you the finest opportunity to own a land that suits your preferred size, budget and payment terms. Trasaco Springs is open to you for development. Our on-site sales executives are ready. Call on 055-659-2658. Hello, welcome back to this conversation. Welcome back to Talk Time. Welcome back to the conversation with Her Excellency, the Ambassador of Cuba to Ghana. Excellency, life in Cuba. How would you describe life in Cuba? As I told you before, Cuba is a small country. But the worst thing that Cuba has is the, it's very close to the United States. In 1959, uh, when the triumph of the revolution, the United States uh, realized that we won't be their part as another star again. Then, uh, in 19, 1962, uh, John F. Kennedy, up of uh, executive order, beginning with the embargo against Cuba. Then. What happened with this embargo? At that time, it was a trade embargo, but with the years, that embargo became bigger and bigger. And in 1992, it was signed the law Torricelli, and with this law, the embargo became extraterritorial. And then also in 1999, will come the Helms-Burton law, and with that, again, the embargo became bigger. Right now, what is happening in Cuba, uh, we are working all time to show the, the world what is happening. In 1992 was the first time that we uh, present our resolution, the necessity of ending the, the commercial, financial, and economic blockade against Cuba for, imposed by the United States. And at that time, we were 50 countries that voted with our revolution, uh, resolution. But in 2021, we're 184 countries voting with us. And also the uh, African Union, mm -hmm. 12 times tell that they are not, uh, they are not comfortable with this uh, blockade against Cuba. The United States uh, didn't finish with this blockade. The thing is in the time of uh, Donald Trump, were issued 243 sanctions against us. It was in the middle of the pandemic time. And what happened at that time, we were in a very big crisis, very big crisis in Cuba. And uh, as the objective of the blockade is a political change in Cuba, they did a big work in media, talking worst things about Cuba, and they became to do some things in our land. Then, at the end, we had some problems and uh, we, we realized that we have to, to change some things. And a few years ago, we began a, a new and economic uh, a structure, a structural change. And we are doing some things there. We are trying to be effective in our economy. But it's not easy without resources. It's not easy in an island that has problems with the climate because we have hurricanes every year. We have a uh, problem with the, with the rains as the country because of the environment that is very affected. But we are trying to take these resources for the priorities we have. Small country facing a blockade for more than 50 years and so on. How do you just survive? With friends, working hard, trying to be productive. But it's not easy. And actually, uh, we are not perfect. We, we did a lot of mistakes. But we are trying to work every time better and better. How is the food situation? Ah, it's difficult because you see for Cubans, Cuba, they look very healthy, they look very strong. They must be eating well. How do you manage it? 
it's difficult, but, but we are, right now, for example, the prices are very high in Cuba. We have a very big inflation. I think it's, it's a problem in the world, as you, as you know, because we, we see here in Ghana, the inflation is, is big. But uh, we are working on it, trying to increase the production, just inflation to come down. Uh, the prices are high, but the people can eat. And also, the government take, take care of these persons that are vulnerable. We have some programs, them to eat, them to have health care. As you know, in Cuba, education and health, they are free. With all the problems, right now, we don't have all the medicines the people need. Because it's very difficult, it's harder to work with this blockade. For example, if we can buy some things from the United States, if it is food, we have to pay, to pay in cash. If it is a biotech thing, you need to do it, but it's difficult because to go through a lot of law and then. Mm -hmm. For us, it's difficult also because if we take it from Europe, it's very far, and then it's more expensive. But we are working hard. We are trying to. What do Cubans eat? <laughs> we love the rice, uh, we love the black beans, we love the pork, also the chicken, and uh, the mandioc that you have here. Cassava. And, yes, cassava. Mm -hmm. And also, oh my God, the name is Malanga. This is uh, jam, but it's jam something. Coco jam. Coco jam. We love coco jam and uh, a lot of salad. We love salad. I went to Cuba one time, and I realized that you throw your cocoa yam leaves away. The cocoa yam. Yes, 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 I know. Why? <laughs> because we don't have the culture to, to prepare <laughs> anything with that. <laughs> it's a delicacy here. Why don't you bring it to us? Yes, maybe. <laughs> maybe we'll have to do it. <laughs> Actually, the cocoa yams, we, we plant it in our houses. Mm -hmm. We are trying to, to develop this to develop the, the, the plants of, that we can eat in our houses. Mm -hmm. If you have a, a small piece of land, you can, you can grow up your food. You don't need to go and bite it. Okay. That's what Cubans eat. Cocoyam, rice, cassava, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. And the pork, so. <laughs> okay, so we are in Cuba. And I've been to Cuba a couple of times. And uh, one of the striking things is the, the spirit, the music, the dance, and so on. How do you do it in the face of a blockade? I mean, this happiness, this exuberance, where does it come from? First, we are in the Caribbean. We must be like that. And it says uh, the the person the so, uh, so, um, socio the sociology and people they, they say the island people they are like that maybe because we are close to the to the sea and uh, and also the climate is close to to Ghana the climate is very and it's a, a cultural thing the if the thing is yes is 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 if the thing is very very bad you must be happy just to be. Uh, confident and uh, to go and for sure you always will have a solution for the problems for sure there are some very difficult things too that appear to happen to Cuba the hurricanes mm -hmm. every year hurricane every year hurricane but at the end of it all you don't appear to see a lot of damage and so on. how do you do it were very well prepared. Fidel Castro was a, a man with a big vision, and he prepared us. He he did it, and uh, we have um, a defense council just to take care of all the things. And every year, when we know that will come a hurricane, we prepare all the people, and we took care, we take care of all of them, vulnerable or not. Mm -hmm. We take care of them, just them not to died this is a little more sensitive last year there were some demonstrations in Havana what happened as I told you uh, with the beginning of the coronavirus all the crisis in Cuba began 
and uh, at that moment where the problem we, we were in our houses we cannot go out to dance we cannot go out to see family we cannot go out to see the the friends we were at home all time with the internet and with the problem to to take the food with the long long very long um, uh, what's the name of this is uh, the, the thing you do it out of the of the shop and they are long queues, long queues and uh, and we we were a little uh, how can I say without hope then the United States made a big program in media to finish with our political system because as I told you this is the objective this is all time the objective of the United States and then they came some people out to demonstrate but at that moment came with these people it wasn't peaceful they, they came in, in a criminal way they devastated some shops they uh, they did some things against the policeman they they uh, they did some things against the normal cars in the street it was a difficult moment it was on july 11th and also there happened some things on july the 12th but in the world what happened what did you see in media that in cuba was all demonstration i was in cuba and i went to the street and nothing happened in my neighborhood nothing happened in my mother's neighborhood nothing happened it happened some things in some places mm -hmm. and then in in the world for all the people media says that cuba was in a chaos mm -hmm. this is not the way and right now we are in a complete safe and secure time we we don't have problems in cuba at this we have problem with the food we need to to to, to work a lot to 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 take the food and also the, the prices are high and all this but this is in all the world but the thing cuba is an issue because the united states make a program against us there have been all kinds of sabotage the the bay of pigs invasion the attempt to sabotage fidel to kill fidel actually and so on how do you manage to survive in the face <laughs> of this attack by one of the most powerful countries in the world Actually, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm sure we don't know. We, we work a lot. And we are trying all the time to, to not be isolated because we are not. Mm. We are very active in the Northern Line Movement. We are very active in the United Nations uh, Organization. The thing is, we are all the time working, working, working. We are very hard working. And I, I can tell you, yesterday I went to see a friend and uh, I, I was promoting some things about the cigars and this. And he told me, it's the, the first time that I see uh, an ambassador, not because, uh, not the first Cuban, it's the first an ambassador from other countries that worked so hard to promote their products. Mm. So the thing is, I'm very ideolo ideological. We don't do the things because we are taking money for it. Then in Cuba, we are like that. We are working hard because we know this is the only way that we can survive to work, to work, and work. Hello, viewers. Uh, we're taking another short break. And uh, when we come back, I'd like to look at something. I'd like to look at women in Cuba. And I'd like to look at women in Cuba, not just because Her Excellency is a woman. Her Excellency is a diplomat in her own right and so on. But a little insight into women in Cuba when we come back. Short break. Me, I have still not got the money for that list of expensive building materials you sent to me. The price of the iron rods have been increased too much, are they? Madam, relax. Look, that's not why I even called you. I just visited IPCP, where the engineers told me everything about your circle fast floor. Chawanko, please, those people are expensive. Are they not the people building those big, big houses in town? I beg, go and the guys. Madam, in fact, I used to think the same of until I visited their office today and they gave me an estimate of how much it will cost. No more! The estimate is real! It's cheaper than the one I even sent you! 
Wow. Building contractors, foremen, masons, visit IPCP, the Trasaco Fast Floor. Engineers will assist you build an affordable, faster and stronger building. Oh, madam, madam. <laughs> it is done. Wow. Trasaco Fast Floor. Stronger, faster and affordable. This is a Trasaco construction product. Hello and welcome back to Talk Time and uh, we are in conversation with Her Excellency Annette Chao Gessia who is the Cuban ambassador to Ghana. Her Excellency, women in Cuba, what role do they play in the Cuban society? Let me answer this as a Cuban lady, not as an ambassador. Cuba is a country, you know, Latin America. We are in the Caribbean, but we have the same culture like Latin America with a lot of machismos. But our revolution realized that we need to change that because the Cuban ladies were a very, very important key in all the struggle against the capitalism. Then we work to reinforce the, the ladies. From the very beginning of the revolution, uh, the revolution Give, gave the, the ladies the opportunity with the, some programs to study first and second, they, we have a positive policy to work with the ladies. If you go to Cuba, you can, you can see that we have the same opportunity that men. Sometimes we are like this, that we need more than this, but you know ladies, we are always <laughs> wanted more. Right now we are, we are working in, the, in a new code, a family code, where the ladies had more opportunities. And, but the most important thing is that the revolution are working, hard working, to reinforce the ladies every time. We have the same salary, we have the same opportunities. And these uh, small things we have from machismos, we are working on it. What has been the, the historic role of women in, in the revolution, you know? What specific role did women play in the revolution? In the armed struggle, for example. Uh, we have to go very, very far in the history. We can talk about Mariana Grajales. Mariana Grajales was the, was the mother of uh, Antonio, Antonio Maceo y Grajales, and uh, also is considered the mother of the Cuban, of the Cuban people. Uh, if you go to Cuba and go to Santa Ifigenia's uh, cemetery, y you can see her, uh, her place, and this is a, an honor place. But we can talk in, about the recent history. We can talk about B Bill Mespin. Bill Mespin had very, very uh, big ties with, with uh, Ghana and mm -hmm. with Nana Conedo Akiman mm -hmm. Rollins, mm -hmm. and uh, she worked a lot for the ladies in Cuba. And also, she was the the secretary of the uh, Cuban uh, Women uh, Federation. That is, in Ch is right now the Cuban Women Federation is in Cuba, and, and we are working with this uh, uh, federation. And uh, also, we can talk about Celia Celia Sanchez Mandulay. Celia Sanchez Mandulay died, but she was a very important uh, person in our uh, revolution struggle. And right now, as you know, we have a lot of ministers, and we have deputy ministers, and uh, we have vice presidents. There was a lot of speculation about what Cuba would be after Fidel. What is Cuba today after Fidel? When the things are uh, developed in the well way, we, you don't need a person to have a system. We are socialist because we decided and also is in our article number one of the of our uh, constitution that we are an socialist rules of law state then fidel castro was a very very important person for our country he will be for all the time the leader of the cuban revolution and also is like a father for a lot of us but fidel castro isn't the system because the system we decided, and for sure, if a people doesn't want a system, the system cannot survive. Cannot survive. 
Well, viewers, we're going to take another short break. And uh, when we come back, we are going to try and position Cuba in the world. Cuba and its links with, with everything international. Cuba and the National Liberation Movement in Africa. Cuba and the African Union. Everything. Cuba in the world. Short break. Hello? Okay, uh, my wife is coming. Why? My wife is coming to send a message. Hello? I'm going to go to the I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go What's it going? Family Drilling Company Limited. Here to borehole, biofuel, biogas, swimming pool, plumbing works in Yenaso, Yeyebi, Freye, 0240-333-111, Anase, 0244-144-822. Me and Pa Anane, you want swimming pool on me see? Me want to, me want to be here. Family Drilling, I can watch it. Family Drilling. What's that shit, Yenaso? Hello and welcome back to Talk Time and uh, we are having a wonderful conversation about Cuba. Everything Cuba with Her Excellency Annette Chao Gessia who is the Cuban ambassador to Ghana. Now we're going to look at Cuba in the world. Small land, 11 million people or thereabouts, big ideas and so on. What do you think is Cuba's position, Cuba's role in the world? What is Cuba trying to achieve in this world? We have more than 120 embassies around the world. Then we have uh, a policy of a very, very big country, but we aren't as small as you said, a very small country. And uh, I think Cuba wants to, to, to tell all the world that we are small, but we deserve the same uh, respect. That's why Cuba is trying to help all time Latin American countries. As, as you know, Cuba is a, a factor of stabilization in, in, in Latin America. Mm -hmm. Cuba is all time uh, trying to, to, to make together all our countries in, in Latin America. But also Cuba helped a lot Africa, not only in Angola, also in some other countries. And we still do it. Not in, with this uh, movement of uh, liberation, the thing is, we, we are working with our doctors and this is a way that we find to tell you that we are there for you. For you. In South Africa, we have a lot of uh, doctors and also teachers, also in Equatorial Guinea and uh, in Guinea-Bissau and uh, in a lot of countries in, in Africa. That's why we are in the African Union and we are important for the African Union. And that's why we are telling you that African Union is very important for us. Why did Cubans have to die for African independence? Because we are the Angola. same. We are the same. The thing is, at what, ta what time of, of our history, of the society, they decide to make borders. But we are human beings. And the thing is, we need to, to have freedom, independence, liberation of all this colonialism. Mm -hmm. You are a wonderful country. You are a big country. You, you were the first one with the independence. At that time, we, was, we didn't have our revolution. But I'm sure if we did have it, we will come to help you. The thing is, we need to be free. Mm. And we are human beings. It's, it doesn't matter if you are from Africa or from China or from the United States or from Russia. The idea is to be free. Cuba is a multicultural society. There are black people, there are white people, there are Spanish people, there are Europeans and so on. How do you manage this mix? 
Actually, I'm not white. <laughs> I'm not white. I mix. My mother, my mother is uh, is uh, mixed more than me. She is uh, dark, and my father was a Spanish man, an a Spanish man that that lived in Barcelona for a long, long time. Then, uh, in me, you can see what happened in Cuba. We don't have discrimination. We we live together. We are an integrated society, and the 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 state work on it all time, and we are trying. For sure, there are some some persons that had some problem, but we don't have uh, fascism in Cuba. We don't have this uh, the, the thing you, you can see in some other countries. In Cuba, we live together without problem, and we dance the same. If you are white, then you see me. <laughs> you yeah. saw me dancing. <laughs> I, I dance like a black people because it's it's the same. We we have the the same roots, and and I have in my blood all the black the blood uh, blood. Mm. Then uh, I am example to be integrated in our society. Mm. And then in Cuba, you can see a small child, a black one, playing with a white one. It's interesting. Uh, a few days ago, I was uh, reading something that uh, our director of the United States was uh, telling, talking about his time in South Africa. And for him, he said, then it's difficult for me, or it was difficult for me, when I went to South Africa and, and I saw the, the children separate. Mm -hmm. We don't have this problem. Mm -hmm. We don't have this problem. We are all together and we don't have problem of discrimination. Cuba. Blockade. And, and the blockade has devastating impact on, on, on Cuba. But Cuba also is a socialist state. How are you a socialist state and at the same time a member of the non-aligned movement, what is the mix? Then the thing is, what that soci socialist means? Uh, the idea to be socialist is to put in the hands of the people the most important resources. And then we are working to have more incomes but for the people. Sometimes it's difficult to understand. If we don't have money, what we will do? The thing is, if we don't have money, we have to, to check how to take a little to give meal to the children, or maybe to buy some medicines, or maybe to, to help a hospital to be better. Then the important thing is, to be socialist is not to be, I don't know, an alien. The thing is, to be aligned is not to be to, aligned. The thing is to be aligned with the good things. Mm. And it's the only way. When you don't have money, you have to find a way to share with all the small things you have. You're also hearing about reforms in Cuba. What are these reforms? What are they intended to achieve? Those reforms were the one that I, that I talked before, uh, that is a, an economic stru a structural new plan. Mm -hmm. The idea is first to increase uh, our incomes with the private and cooperative sector. We are uh, uh, working them to, to be big. And uh, not only in agriculture, this cooperative sector in, in some other uh, fields, and also uh, to, to be big. The, the, the credits, we have a new policy of credits and also the tax policies uh, is a new one. And, but the thing in this reform is not to reform our political system. We just want to, re to reform our economic, just our economy, sorry, just to be effective. More efficient. More efficient. Yes. Your Excellency, how do you see the future? I do want to see it, but I cannot. <laughs> I do want to see it, but, uh, but for sure, we will be consequent. Cuba, all time, gave all the, the countries demonstrations that we are uh, consequent. We, we, we won't uh, change our line. We, all time, will be in solidarity with all developing countries and also we will try to help our people all time. Will the blockade ever be lifted? 
Actually, if 184 countries says they don't want the blockade and they are there, we don't know how, how long will be. We have to work with it. It's a, it's a reality we have, and then we have to, to live with it. What would you do or not do in order to lift the blockade? We have the solidarity that our time is pushing us here in Ghana. We have a very good solidarity campaign here. And uh, also we are going to, to all, all years, we, we will go again and again. We went for the 29th uh, time to, to the United Nations. We will go again and again, just the, the United States know he is isolated, because they are isolated at that uh, topic. But the thing is, we are working we are working with the uh, United States people, people to people. This is the way they want to. Your Excellency, most grateful for coming to the studio. Thank, Thank you, you very much. very, very, very much for coming to the studio. Well, we've been talking to the ambassador of the Republic of Cuba to Ghana. We've been talking to Her Excellency Annette Chao Garcia. And we've been talking about Cuba today. We've been talking about the blockade. We've been talking about Cuba's advances in education and health, Cuban cooperation with Ghana. We can't talk about everything, but we've tried to cover as much as we can. And I do hope that we have all learned a thing or two about Cuba and its struggles for improvement in, in national life and its relations with the rest of the world. Keep talking about Cuba, keep reading about Cuba, keep learning about Cuba until we meet again next week to discuss another topic. Keep Cuba on your mind. It's bye-bye from all of us, from Pan-African Television, from the director of the show, Adam Lumo, uh, from the producer of the show, George Binet, and from all of us. Bye-bye until we see you again next week. Goodbye.